Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Happy St. Patrick's Day weekend as well. I hope everybody has something fun planned for the weekend. We are here for another edition of the Weekly Member Spotlight, and I'm very excited to sit down with Mr. Will Knight from Pinnacle Paving and Sealing. Will's the Vice President with Pinnacle Paving and Sealing, and I kind of roped him into this initiative um, because Pinnacle Paving and Sealing is one of the diamond sponsors for the Greater Cincinnati Northern Kentucky Apartment Association. They came to one of our board meetings uh, a couple of months ago or so, and I grabbed him right in the middle of the meeting in front of everyone. <laughs> so he couldn't turn me down, and I said, hey, Will, we'd love to have you come to do one of our weekly member spotlight interviews. And lo and behold, we finally got together. Yes, and actually you asked Alan, who doesn't like to do these, uh, so he, uh, he pointed to me. <laughs> yeah, well, I, didn't know, I didn't know who I was asking. I just wanted somebody from Pinnacle here. So thank you very much. I appreciate you spending your Friday morning with us. Um, if I could just ask maybe if you would take a moment and introduce yourself, tell us, I've already told everyone who you are, who you work for, but maybe just tell us a little bit about your company and um, how you got okay. involved with the association. Uh, my name is Will Knight, Vice President of Pinnacle Paving and Sealing. I've been there about six years now. I've uh, been in the industry, paving industry for 15 years. Been in construction trades for about 30 years. Um, I've actually been working uh, with the Apartment Association off and on for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, very important trade group that we do business with and very important to our company at Pin Pinnacle Paving and Sealing. Um, Alan Zeminski is the president and owner of the company. He started the company a little over 15 years ago and I joined him about six years ago and uh, we have grown it into a pretty uh, pretty uh, awesome company. We have almost 50 employees now and we cover the entire tri-state region and go as far as Columbus, Indianapolis, Lexington, Louisville, even Cleveland which I just visited yesterday. Wonderful. Well, um, how did you get involved? You said you've been in the paving industry for about 15 years or so. How did you get into that particular field? Well, I, you know, like I said, I've always been in construction related trades and I was working for a large uh, commercial grounds maintenance company as a regional manager, which we did everything out there and they got bought out by a, a larger company, which was basically a venture capital group. And it very quickly felt like corporate America, and that's not what I was looking for when I sold my company and joined them. Um, not too long after that, I ran into a friend of mine who had a paving company, and long story short, he offered me a position there. They were growing. I went there, was with that company for uh, seven, uh, eight years, and then Alan convinced me to uh, come over to Pinnacle. Uh, we had a meeting at a Bob Evans and, and, and <laughs> finished our negotiations basically in the parking lot. Really? So yeah, so that was kind of an interesting uh, uh, encounter and, and it worked out. It was the best move I ever made and I've loved every minute of Wonderful. it. Wonderful. Are you involved with any other uh, local apartment associations? You mentioned some cities where we have some... We, uh, we're also involved with the Greater Dayton Apartment Association okay. also. Great. And there's, there's a couple other trade groups we're, we're involved with also like CAI. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say the, uh, the Cincinnati Northern Kentucky Apartment Association is, is probably our biggest and most important uh, alliance. Well, we appreciate that very much. I know we have the trade show coming up here yes. on March 28th. That's always a really great opportunity for our associate members to get to speak to our um, primary members. And are you looking forward to that event? Oh, yes. We, we have a booth there every year. Mm -hmm. And uh, unless something important comes up, uh, Alan and I are both there every time. Great. Well, hopefully everyone will stop out and say hello to you. That's two short weeks away, less than two weeks now. We're looking forward to it. Yeah. Well, um, I know having been in the industry for so long, you've probably encountered your fair share of crazy stories. Do you have one that you'd like to share with us? Um, I'd say the, the most memorable one I had was something more company related. Um, uh, we had a long-term paving foreman that uh, he was a, an older gentleman, passed away in the off season, and he had a request that we pave his ashes into our parking lot when we paved oh the goodness. lot. And we actually did that, had a little ceremony wow. and everything, and some of his family was there. Wow. It was uh, quite an emotional uh, occurrence. That's interesting. So you always have people that want their ashes strewn over the ocean right, and in right. the mountains, and this was his life, and that's what he wanted. Wow. That's, I say good morning to him every time I walk over there. Oh, <laughs> That's kind of cool. Um, what kind of advice would you give to folks, maybe fellow associate members who are in this association? I'd say the biggest thing is, is the strength of every company is the people. Mm -hmm. 
and it's so hard to find good people, especially these days with uh, uh, the economy is doing well, the growth is there for a lot of places, and people are stretched to the limit. So finding good people, uh, training them and retaining them is probably the most important thing that you can do, and then supply them with the tools and resources to, so that they can do their job to the best of their ability and then let them perform. That's very well said, and it transcends whatever industry you're working in. That is the same, I think, in any business, so very good yeah. advice. How do, you, how do you recruit and how do you find great people it's work a, in the field? It's a major combination of every tool possible because it is so hard to find, and the paving industry mm -hmm. is, is very small and mm -hmm. tighter than you would think. Most everybody knows everybody. Um, so we do it uh, with our employees, our foremen, reaching out to people. Um, we do recruiting ourselves. Um, we've tried to, you know, posting jobs in, in every media source there is. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think word of mouth, uh, mm -hmm. because we're mainly looking for people that are in the construction trades and hopefully in the paving or concrete business right. that have some experience. Right. And it's hard to find good ones. Mm -hmm. So. We, that I'm asking for personal um, personal reasons. There's definitely um, a very tight labor market right now, and so that's that's really great advice. Um, well, do you mind if we shift gears a little bit and get to know you a little bit more on a personal level? Okay. Well, tell us a little bit about your family. Um, recently remarried uh, about a year and a half ago. I met my soulmate at a motorcycle benefit ride of all things. Well, she was volunteering there. And um, so we have a, a new combined family. I have two sons, uh, Paxson and Spencer, 23 and 20. Mm -hmm. Or Spencer will be 20 here shortly. And uh, her two kids, Bella and Grady, who both live with us. Uh, she, great, let's see, Bella's 20 and Grady is 16. Okay. So, uh, so it's a little interesting. Um, I've got a. I say I've got a small family because we moved away from uh, New, or New Orleans area, which is where both my parents are from. Okay. Uh, but my wife's family is even smaller. She was an only child, yeah. and, and uh, her dad uh, lives in Dallas, and she's originally from Columbia. Oh, okay, wow. So. Well, very, very interesting. What kind of hobbies do you enjoy? Uh, the biggest one is uh, saltwater fishing. Really? I uh, love it. Got hooked on it. Where uh, do you go? Down to the Keys every winter. Yeah. Yes, I usually go down for three to four weeks as long as my wife will let me stay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I got a couple buddies of mine usually go down and uh, some friends from uh, the Illinois area outside mm -hmm. of Chicago that we've met down there. So we have a little group that gathers down in the middle of the Keys every winter for several weeks. Okay. And we just, we have a blast. Do you, is there a certain kind of fish that you're going for? Like what's the best catch? What's your best fishing story? Um. Well, we've, I tell you what, we've caught so many different things out of the ocean that mm -hmm. some of them you can't even identify anywhere from big moray eels to large sharks. Uh, kingfish are probably the most exciting, the most common fish you can catch that put up a good fight. Um, probably the yellowtail snapper is mm -hmm. one of the best, or hogfish, probably mm -hmm. the best eating fish. Mm -hmm. uh, so when what we catch and keep, we fillet ourselves and we bring it back frozen and yeah. we have fish fillets all year. Having a fish Friday today? <laughs> uh, maybe not today, yeah. but we will. We'll have two or three at the office, yeah. and I'll have uh, several at the house. Oh, that's interesting. What about any pets? Any pets in your blended family? We have a little lasso apso. I don't know if he's little. We call him Dense. Yeah. Uh, his name's Felix. He's about <laughs> 27 pounds. So, yeah. uh, he's also known as Big Fluffy. I told oh. my wife into letting his hair grow out because they'd always cut his hair real short. Uh -huh. So he looks twice as big as usual. <laughs> he's cute. spoiled right. Oh, yeah, I bet. <laughs> Um, what about sports? Are you into any local sports? FC Cincinnati is my favorite team. Yeah. I was in coaching soccer for a long time. Both my boys played and played in high school. And uh, then we went through rec and club and even select. And, okay. And uh, that's something. So I got to uh, learn and, and understand it very well. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people think it's a boring game. It's simply because you don't understand right. all the intricacies and the one-on-one -on -one battles going out there. Right. Probably the most physical sport out there without any pads or gloves. Oh on. my goodness, for sure. Yes. A friend of mine in high school um, who was the goalie got kicked in the, the lip and his lip swelled like it didn't even look real. It was like cartoonish and as soon as I saw that happen I knew very quickly how legit soccer was. Yes. Have you been to one of the FC 
Oh, games. quite a few, yeah. quite a few, yes. Excited and, about the new stadium? Oh, I'm, I'm loving it. The uh, Their practice facility is actually uh, half a mile from our office. Okay. So that's been interesting to see that going in. And uh, coming back just recently from my vacation, uh, met a gentleman who was who's very good friends with Jeff Birding, the president of the club. Mm -hmm. And I showed him a picture. I had my FC Cincinnati shirt on. I was in Cuba mm -hmm. for a week with my wife and got a picture of us in the, uh, like a three-wheel bike where a guy was driving us around, uh -huh. showing us part of Old Havana, and got a picture of us. And he spotted the shirt oh, cool. and said, can I send that to Jeff Birding? He will get a kick out of oh, the fact wow. that he's got a fan down in Havana, Cuba. Oh, wow. Well, that's cool. Yeah, it's really exciting when it's done for the city, too. I'm excited yes, for, the new, for the new center to get built. Well, um, you live in Cincinnati now. What's one of your favorite local restaurants? And then maybe what's one of your favorite um, restaurants? Sounds like you're quite the traveler. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite local re restaurant would be a, a tie between one of Jeff Ruby's mm -hmm. or Kona Grill. Okay. And up in Liberty Town Center. I just ate there for the first time a few months ago. It's really Did good. You? Mm -hmm. oh, my wife and I love it. It's actually not too far. Uh, we recently built a new house up in Lebanon in yeah. Shaker Run Golf Club okay. community. I live in Monroe. I'm okay. Your neighbor, one town over. Right, yeah. exactly. And uh, so, but as far as my favorite all time, it's got to be Waco's Club in uh, Veradero, Cuba. Oh. Uh, it was amazing. The, the service and the food there was, it, it seemed to be on par with Ruby's. Yeah. And couldn't beat the location and, and uh, just the scenery being there by the ocean. And, and uh, it, it was just fantastic. What is Cuban food like? Um, you have a pretty big variety. Obviously, the seafood's fresh, mm -hmm. just like being in the Keys. It was great. Um, they have a lot of similar type food that, that we would eat here. Mm -hmm. The spices, are, they're not really spicy, but the flavoring's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. But a lot of places had uh, pork and beef and chicken and fish and mm -hmm. lobster. So it was just, it was all freshly made. Yeah. And, and we ate in the Paladars, which are the home-based restaurants mm -hmm. that they're allowed to do. So there are smaller groups of people. And so the food is not pre-prepared, right. nothing. It's, they cook it by order, so everything's coming right off of the stove, right That's off great. of the grill, right mm -hmm. to your plate. Okay. So that, and I think it was just being in Cuba and, and the experience, you right. know, makes you appreciate everything so much more. Is that the favorite, your favorite place that you've traveled? So far it is now. Um, I was really amazed uh, how friendly the people were. Um, it was not what I expected. Mm -hmm. Um, we went with another couple that uh, had been there many times. They Their jobs have been worldwide tour guides, and they kept talking about it. And we went down, and my wife speaks fluent Spanish, and they speak Spanish, so a lot of that made it a lot easier for us, and they sure. have contacts and had stuff set up for us to do, but it was an amazing trip, and I'd do it again. It was a lot easier to go there than, than what people think. Yeah, interesting. So, Well, um, are you a TV or movie guy? Um, not so much other than sports, mm -hmm. watching sports on TV, but uh, if I had to pick my favorite movie of all time was probably The Last of the Mohicans. Oh, that was a good one. Very long movie, mm -hmm. but it had a lot of everything from history to a love story to action to um, loyalty issues. I mm -hmm. mean, it just it covered like every realm and every emotion you could imagine. Sure. What about reading? Are you into read any good books lately or? Um, don't get a chance to read a whole lot because I'm reading emails and text messages and trade information all the time, but I happen to read uh, a book, Miss Bossy Pants. Miss Bossy Pants. Yes, and uh, I, I really, really like that book. My, it was one my wife had, and I just picked it up and started reading it. And it's Tina Fey. It. Is it Tina an autobiography? Fey. or is Pretty it? much, okay. yes. Yes, it was, it was very interesting to hear her take on a lot of things. Right. So. She's funny. Yes, and uh, you know I like her as a, an actor and comedian, uh -huh. and her, her book was uh, pretty funny. Mm -hmm. I like the cover of that book with yes. her. She's got like a man hand or something <laughs> coming from behind her. I've not read the book, but it's on my She's list. She's very self-deprecating. Oh, I can imagine. <laughs> Which is hilarious. Well, what about music? Have you been to any good concerts? Um, yes, the... Uh, I mean, I can still remember one of the first big concerts I ever went to was ELO in Atlanta back in 78. Oh, nice. I mean, I'm giving my age away a little bit. But uh, I'd say um, that I got a kind of a tie. The uh, I, I went to the Who in, in Cleveland oh, wow. Stadium in, yeah. in 91 mm -hmm. 
which was which was amazing. And uh, but I tell you, the best performance, um, I'd have to give it to Kid Rock. Oh yeah. He puts on a hell of a show. Where'd you see him? Uh, down at um, Riverbend. Okay. Twice now. I saw the funniest picture of Kid Rock on, it was like one of those Facebook memes or something, and it was a picture of Kid Rock, who's obviously aging, as we all are, and it said, why does Kid Rock look like Dr. Phil dressed up like Kid Rock? <laughs> and it was something you can't unsee. I'll have to send you that picture. It was I funny. will. That would be hilarious. Uh, it was very funny. Um, we're going to wind it down. I just have a couple more questions for you. Um, what's an interesting fact or detail about you that you haven't otherwise shared with us? Well... Um, try and think of it something actually interesting or random. You can substitute that interesting with random. <laughs> um, I know I, I know I tried to answer this question before and I can't even remember what I wrote because then my mind started racing. Um, you mentioned that you've lived in several different places. Yeah, that's true. Uh, my, my father was P&G and uh, he got transferred a lot growing mm -hmm. up. It was like worse than an army brat. <laughs> seven different schools in seven different states and then three different college in, in oh, colleges wow. in two different states wow. so it seemed like i was always moving mm -hmm. i don't hear an accent you mentioned new orleans and so did you move when you were young um well i was born in atlanta uh -huh. my brother was born in cincinnati my sister in florida in that order oh, wow. uh, we went to uh, down to louisiana every summer to visit mm -hmm. uh, I, I never lived there, but I go there for two weeks and I come back talking like a Cajun. <laughs> you get a few drinks in me, and the drawl starts coming <laughs> there out. <you> go. <laughs> so, so no, I've been I've been in Cincinnati now for a long time. So, kind of kind of lost my accent. I I think from having moved around so much and and everything that I've experienced, I tend to adapt mm -hmm. to the people I'm around, and sure. I pick up accents really mm -hmm. quickly. And I don't even realize I'm doing it. Yeah, uh, just out of habit. I do that a little bit. I was in Lula this week and I said feel or something and it came out like really, <laughs> like where in the world did that come from? I guess I'm a chameleon over here. You do, you pick it up without even, it's your brain exactly. just uh, you know, learning new things, right. so to speak. Well, one more question for you and then I'll let you get to your weekend. Um, wanted to ask you, how do you think people that have worked with you in this industry and maybe even um, you know in the apartment association specifically, how would people describe you? Um, I can be very intense, especially at work. Um, sometimes it comes across as rude or brash, mm -hmm. um, but I'm just a very focused person and my ADHD, my mind is always racing, so I'm thinking about 75 different things at the same time. Um, get me away from work, I can be a hell of a fun guy. <laughs> I'll be the first one to buy a round of beers and uh, crack a sarcastic comment and uh, but I think once people get to know me, they find out I'm, I'm the kind of person I'll do everything I can to help anybody. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I will give someone opportunities and chances, but I'm gonna expect something out of them. Sure. And I'll hold people accountable. And that's hard to do these days. A lot of people don't do it. It is hard to do, but it's um, a sign of, I think, respect. People deserve to hear the truth. Yes. Um, and I think they wanna hear the truth, whether they want to or not. And if you can get past the delivery sometimes of that message, accountability makes everything just a little easier. Very well said. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. It's been a pleasure. Thanks and I for having me. Thank you again for being a Diamond sponsor. Looking forward to seeing you and uh, your partner at the trade show coming up. It is March 28th at the Sharonville Convention Center. I think we probably still have a little time to get registered if you have not done so already. So thank you again, Will. It's been a pleasure. Make sure you stop and see us at Pinnacle Paving and Ceiling. Absolutely. Thanks, everyone. Have a great weekend. Thank you.